Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing our USA series here. Uh, the goal for this series is to get to half a billion pops, um, utilizing largely the mass migration, which is going to involve us kneecapping uh, Great Xing and forcing them into being the Heavenly Kingdom, which is why we restarted last episode and made sure that they lost the Opium Wars. Now they lost a revolution. They're going to need their turmoil to build up, but hopefully after their turmoil builds up, they'll get the Heavenly Kingdom War and we will side against, uh, you know, Great Xing to make sure that Heavenly Kingdom wins because Heavenly Kingdom has open borders and this open borders is critical for our strategy. Other than that, we also did manage to go after the Mexico and do the Mexico stuff, take all of the Mexican dirt, which was pretty nice, as well as win the Civil War. So that's mainly what we did last episode. This episode will largely be recovering. We have quite a bit of turmoil in a variety of places uh, as a result of, you know, taking the dirt off of Mexico. I think so. We really not have turmoil? Yeah, we got some turmoil. And so, um, in addition to having turmoil from the Civil War, and so we're just kind of a little bit in recovery mode. We're going for some of the really soft expansion spots, and we're still trying to, uh, you know, leverage our economy to be as oriented towards the mines and the wood choppies as possible, and looking to export this stuff. And even, uh, I think, to the extent that we really, really want to de-peasant, because I think this de-peasanting mechanic is much, much more valuable because migration is so much stronger and so you can be in deep peasant mode for longer i think we're going to even do stuff like import uh steel and we're already importing steel to be honest and also import engines anything that's coming off of an 800 construction cost building i think we're going to be in import mode on these um because just kind of testing a new strategy i don't know if this is correct i'm not 100 percent sure um this type of thing explosives has really good uh you know uh mappy considerations and it's a, on an 800 cost building but we're going to be on the lookout for importing this type of stuff um as best we can because we want to be focused on the mines and so this is one way in which we can be focused on the mines anyways let's get to it we managed to pull shang into the customs union so kind of expecting this next monday to see there to be some amount of migration occurring uh wait they have closed borders that is right but we do see migration coming out from beijing which we conquered which is being distributed around our country it looks like they're all going to minnesota so we can take a look at minnesota let's see minnesota's uh kind of classic American doesn't know which where the states are we can see here there is a Han community and in fact it's predominantly Han let's take a look at the culture map we got our first Han takeover in Minnesota here which is going to be super nice we're probably going to be painting a lot of this Han if the strategy goes according to plan and so we'll see how that is able to take off also we have been getting some mass migration uh, mass migrations a little bit more than I would have anticipated uh, if we come into the ledger and we switch to mass migration attraction we can see that uh, we are getting a couple here and here and if we sort by mass migration attraction we see that we are in the lead and the person behind us is our subject and so uh, yeah we got them as a subject for free they are using edicts we are currently not and we still have an enormous mass migration attraction beyond that we're going to be going for open hearth process so that we can use carnegie steel company which is quite strong this is the the thing one of the thing uh but thing two of the thing is of course that after this I think we're going to make a little bit of a line for steel frame buildings, which is naturally a very good tech, but on top of being a very good tech, it gives us the Statue of Liberty, which gives 25% migration attraction, which is very, very strong on top of that. And so we will be going ahead of time, uh, quite ahead of time, but this is okay because we are kind of in the number one tech bracket as of right now, and we don't mind spending money to go ahead of time and then just let our natural spread fill in the gaps. Um, this is inefficient, but tech is, as you can see here, we're not natural spreading any production tech here. We're waiting for someone else to get the tech so that we can start researching it. And so we're going to go ahead of time on the open hearth process. And then our natural spread will uh, take over from here. Because we have no natural spread on production, we are more incentivized to go ahead of time so that we can make use of, uh, you know, the tech spread. Uh, anyways, continuing on little bit of an interesting situation we're trying to pass public health insurance with two percent enactment chance which we don't come up with that that often but it's a nice law and uh it's good for the migration playthrough and it makes the trade unions happy and they're demarginalized in government but if we pull them out they'll instantly marginalize really really nice to be getting their bonuses but we get an ultimatum and uh we're just going to hope to roll something that's going to give us some enactment chance and this is pretty much it um 
uh, we don't really have anything we are like super yearning to get through right now anyways and so it's pretty fine this the the u.s like government system where they try and only have two parties is just absolutely wild and out right now in terms of just like letting us have this super righteous government while running max taxes and getting to have the trade unions in. it's just a very strange kind of situation uh but we're just proceeding along largely kind of hoping to fully manifest the destiny here uh, we're just going to choose that one it's fine and then for these events we are always choosing the one that favors the african-american pops because at the end of this we want them to be accepted and so this is why we're doing this um i think once we finish colonizing all of this stuff then we will get the event with the uk provided we have good relations with the uk which we do largely on the back of a trade agreement we in theory should probably try and uh run more trade or probably should try and you know remedy our relations with uh france uh so that we don't get our pie thumbed quite a lot later but for now it's kind of fine it's not too big a deal i think we'll actually take a look and try and run more trade routes with them but um not the end of the world if you can get a trade agreement though usually you can kind of save yourself a whole lot of headache throughout the rest of the game we pip a couple events and bada bing bada boom we have you know 30 percent enactment chance here uh on enacting public health insurance it's going to help a lot with the migration and so this is going to be fantastic. We're also going after Peru here. Um, you notably can annex them immediately after doing, like, the Peru shuffle, I guess we could call it. And they have quite a bit of resources. Uh, they have a decent chunk of arable land, and they're going to work quite nicely for our, uh, you know, attempting to pull migrants in thing, because a lot of their arable land is unused. Uh, and so uh, I'm not sure if we incorporate them right away, though, because they incorporate, they will incorporate really quick. And so this will pull down our average for some time, but it's probably, eh, maybe it's worth incorporating. We have a lot of levels of police, uh, so we can kind of negate a lot of the effects of the term. Oh my god, clicking on institutions is hard. We can negate a lot of the effects of the turmoil uh, with these, and it will also help to just bring all of our institutions. So we probably incorporate a little bit aggressively here. New Granada's also really popped off, which was kind of interesting to see. Uh, their population really cranked up. I think they got some mass migration here, and then that was kind of that. And now they cost a lot of infamy to go for. So it's a little unfortunate we kind of didn't get them in our opener, but, um, you know, we got Bolivia for free, so that's pretty substantive. And we are continuing to get mass migrations. Really, really, um, and this is before we have, you know, anything crazy going on. Um, and so this is going to be quite nice. We did shuffle around the tech stuff a little bit. We actually need Quinine in order to go after... Uh mapping the american frontier in order to get these states up here for free so we made a little bit of an adjustment this will also help us colonize faster and also it will give more time for some of this stuff to natural spread um so that we can be a little bit more efficient with the tech spread as far as placing our universities go uh, we decided to kind of place the 31 over here um, we don't have a 31 elsewhere and this will help us out quite a bit we do have a negative throughput from unincorporated at this current point in time but it is incorporating and also also very importantly this will allow us to actually employ up most of the stuff once this comes up uh, because we will not be having qualification problems uh, once we have you know this amount of universities uh, even though everyone's discriminated against 31 universities that's going to be a lot of qualifications so we'll be able to cruise here in Beijing we also have been adding uh, some level of, what is it, uh, convoys into kind of what we've been doing, adding in a bunch of ports. Um, we want to increase trade route size uh, quite a bit. You can see we're exporting a ton of hardwood, a bit of coal, a bit of wood. We're importing, you know, some things. Uh, some of these, well, I guess that's most of the ones that are costing uh, con uh, convoys is the kind of top ones. Uh, but this is going to help out our economy and is allowing us to run the loud cars. But in addition to the loud cars outside, it's allowing us to to run an unbalanced economy that is really unbalanced towards wood which is depeasanting guys way 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 faster which is helping to facilitate all these mass migration attractions now to be fair as the usa we'd be getting them anyways but we're trying to really really unbalance our economy towards depeasanting uh and included in this is we're also building a going to be building quite a lot of fish as well but for now we're going to be a little bit more focused on the wood in the mines because we have companies for these uh but as uh you know the wood in the mines tend to start to get kind of exhausted in terms of what we're able to do we're going to put on auto expands on the fish as well
So we are going to see if we can get Chile for free using a reverse sway. This is one of the reasons why the La Plata interest is the best interest to have a uh, diplomatic interest as long as you're relatively strong because very often you can get both Chile and Argentina for free. So what we're going to do is we're just going to join on the side of these guys, the native uprising, and then these guys sing and quaking in our boots the massive military power that we have on the opposite side of the play. They are willing to become a protectorate for freezies, good dealsies, and there we have it, just kind of a free protectorate, uh, no questions asked. And beyond that, we will also just be able to reduce autonomy just as soon as we're able, uh, which is going to be really, really nice uh, because we would want to annex these guys as quickly as possible. Um, they have migration control, so we can't siphon off migrants from them. And hey, 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 after some improving relations with France, they're willing to accept a trade agreement. It's probably unnecessary for us to continue to improve relations with them because we will get to getting positive relations from the trade agreement, uh, which will help greatly uh, to maintain positive relations with them. And then with the extra influence, we can float, we can decay our infamy faster, which is going to be pretty nice as well. So we're trying to pass proportional taxation, the one that we did some funny business for for trying to pass go before by going back to uh, you know uh, what is it per capita taxation or rather land-based taxation uh, the reason why you do this go back to land base to go forward is because nobody except the trade unions supports going to proportional however because of the funny business we did last episode in regards to you know manipulating the clout and this sort of thing we do have the trade unions in government and if we just high roll like at the start here and get some enactment chance we're actually in pretty good shape to pass it so this is pretty nice Pretty, pretty, pretty nice. And this is all because we uh, intentionally abdicated wrecking everyone's clout except for the trade unions. And then once we put in government, they get to stay in government alongside the USA's, of course, uh, absolutely insano parties. Um, the industrialists lost so much clout that they actually can't, aren't eligible to be their own party anymore, which means they're getting zero votes, which means they have basically no clout. And so the clout collapsed, and so we basically have a hyper-legitimate government with all the interest groups in government, and they're all super happy, and we just, well, okay, we're losing out on the industrialists. That's kind of it. But other than that, things are going absolutely spectacularly politically-wise. So we have a type of dimple play that... I don't launch too often, which is just a we're gonna break up Brazil type play. Um, they added some new releasables to Brazil that I think make this sort of play a lot better, uh, where we're gonna try and liberate Amazonia, Minas Gerais, and the Confederation of the Equator, and then this way the, the pieces will be much more bite-sized in terms of us gobbling them up. I think, what can we do here? Um, ch -ch 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 reaches the summit. All right, we'll gain minor progress here. I don't think we need whatever prestige or what have you that we can generate from there. Kind of plugging along with proportional taxation or on it. Uh, and it's looking like we're going to have a really, really easy diplo play here uh, between our power, uh, which we are largely, when we have a big fight, we're largely just leveraging the uh, army uh, with 50 conscripts fi plus 50 conscripts from uh, Beijing. Uh, and then when we are not fighting with that, we just kind of wave our magical uh, frightening stick at the enemies, which is this 300 plus 100 conscript army from the USA, which we just never conscript up. And then with the small little small ball expansion, we are just going for uh, utilizing these uh, lancers plus uh, skirmish infantry. Uh, just this 20 stack uh, is more than enough to do kind of the small ball-y type of stuff. Uh, and we're just proceeding along like this. Tragedy has struck just as soon as we realized that we had Mr. Abraham Lincoln, he's already dead. It's just like going to the theater. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. I fear that I might have made a horrible mistake. I don't recall having to pass racial segregation before uh, we finished Reconstruction, or having to get rid of racial segregation, but maybe we have to in order to accept African American pops. Uh, and it seems that maybe we just only have Yankee as the primary culture. Um, that would not be ideal. <sighs> I think that might be the case. In which case, I messed up here. Uh, and it shouldn't affect the overall trajectory because we are planning on going multicultural anyways. Uh, I think that uh, this will reduce peril, for sure. Um, but uh, this is not good. Damn, that's unfortunate. I didn't realize we had to pass... I mean, it makes sense that we would have to pass it, but uh, I didn't realize that we had to do cultural exclusion before we finish Reconstruction. 
Oh, it's oh, that's uncomfortable. I mean, we can't incorporate. I I don't even know if the strategy involves a lot of incorporating um, African uh, provinces, anyways, um, because we we're trying to keep our average up high. In fact, I think we actively kind of don't want to do that, but. Um, uh, it, it's definitely suboptimal, and so we did make a mistake there, I think. Um, uh, yeah, I, mm, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So we managed to yo-yo sway France here into giving us a uh, bankroll, which is absolutely spectacular, considering that's just a native uprising they have to worry with. Uh, and we'll take the enactment chance, knowing that the election is secure in the hands of our only party here. We have one party, the party always wins. It's like having single party state before single party state. And with this, this bankroll is gonna be such a banger for us. We're getting 17, or we're getting 18K from Dimple Packs right now. We're gonna see if we can get a loud car outside uh, and reduce the autonomy of someone somewhere. Um, well, we'll roll the dice on these guys. Oh, they say no, terrible. Um, this is a tragedy. That is a really loud car. I don't know if you guys know, but that car is... That car is the truth. That might be a motorcycle. No, that sounds like a car. But anyways, the point is, is that uh, we will be getting, uh, instead of 17k, really just want to emphasize this as soon as the we get the turn of the event. Hey, hey we're going to get an additional 70k uh, from the French Republic in the form of bankroll. And you know, the best part about this, even though we strong-armed them, and wow, they annexed Switzerland, the truth hurts, neutralized that big neutral. The best part about this is it also gives us ticking positive relations with them, uh, and quite a bit from them bankrolling us. We do get open hearth process, and we also manage to pass um, the tax law. We're going to go for cultural exclusion. I don't know if this will give us African American as primary culture. I think we have to do it before reconstruction, but we're just seeing if we can do it late. But uh, And if, even if we can't, we don't want to discriminate against them anyway, so this is going to be useful to us. And now we can swap out the company. I think we're going to retain uh, the steel mills company, uh, this company here, and instead we're going to disband... Well, actually, we could disband the wood company. I think we still have a lot more chopping to do, so we're not going to disband the wood company just yet. But instead we're going to disband this company for Carnegie Steel, which is going to give it railway building throughput and throughput on these. And notably, uh, this is something I just learned earlier today. Uh, apparently, this was from the latest patch. The construction bonus stacks. Now, it stacks in a way that is diminishing returns. Uh, so instead of getting 33% construction bonus, we're going to get a 1.5 times this on specifically the iron mines, which is going to allow us to construct iron mines much, much, much faster. But it's also going to give us... Uh, throughput and construction on steel which is going to be pretty nice because the next tech we have coming in is going to be steel frame buildings uh, both for the construction which we can now very very easily afford as well as for the good old statue of liberty so kind of rounding out uh this episode mainly with uh, just kind of repairing and like fully integrating and like all this uh, big nice USA uh, nice strong foundation on top of getting a bunch of stuff for free really uh, because we got Chile for free uh, we got uh, Orania for free because they were revving we got this bankroll for free we got that cheddar we got that bag so we are anticipating coming up on steel frame buildings so we don't want to add a bunch of new construction sectors so instead what we've done is we've pulled down the taxes uh quite a little bit uh which should raise sol um it should help us to generate some more loyalists at least on a short-term basis and so this will be fine uh and then we can re-increase the taxes when and we need to we want to be running like a slight deficit here and so that'll be pretty comfortable we want to come in here and also protect these guys we're going to wait until just when this is guy is uh, just slightly positive here, um, or uh, rather we're going to wait until it's below 10.6, uh, which should just be a couple ticks, uh, because we don't want to go over 25, this will change people's attitudes towards us, and so we just want to avoid doing that if we can, um, you know, just waiting this short little bit. But in Venezuela is quite a bit of oil that is yet undiscovered, and so this will be pretty good for us, uh, a very nice boon. Uh, Mexico's likely to join against us, but this is not a big deal. Um, we're probably probably going to just mobilize or get ready to mobilize uh, the Chinese army. We'll just send it over here uh, with the idea that they can push into Mexico pretty comfortably. And then our landing squad army will be able to, you know, land pretty comfortably um, into uh, Venezuela, we think. And if not, we can land with the other army. We did uh, kind of increase uh, the size of our navy a little bit. I think we're just going to
gonna come in and just like uh, add a little bit uh, just to make things a little bit smoothed out um, in terms of our navy and these guys won't even need to come up a full level and instead we will just get to increase uh, by 16 uh, the size of our navy so we can land a bigger squad if we have to and a big navy is always something that's kind of nice to have Ooh, I thought we were I thought we were under it this is unfortunate. It changed people's opinions towards us. Uh, we wanted to be underneath 25, not exactly 25. Good old paradox math on some one of those little bits. So we finally finish mapping the frontier. We get wonderful news. No longer busy. And we've mapped the Great Salt Lake. Now, do we need to map more stuff is the question. Uh, we might have to map more stuff. We have to be at peace, though. Uh, just kind of checking in on the Oregon border dispute. We need to discover the Oregon Trail. So we've just come as far as Great Salt Lake. Um, this war is a little bit bigger than we had anticipated, so we're mobilizing our absolutely humongo army. Um, and we have these guys coming in. Uh, we should probably actually, here, let's recruit this guy. I'm gonna promote this guy a little bit. He is a radical petite bourgeoisie, which is kind of a little on the better side, so I don't think we're gonna fire him anytime soon. Uh, and we will make sure that we have enough guys to lead here, but we should be able to push into Mexico with this. Uh, we are trying to land here, and uh, we are struggling a little bit, but it looks like we're gonna get in here eventually. We wanna turn on baking powder so we don't forget, because we always forget, uh, and we are going to be continuing on this way. Um, this is gonna get really expensive really, really quick though. Uh, you know, actually conscripting up this like 500 stack of conscripts, and we should probably have multiple stacks, one of where, okay, we reasonably wanna conscript up another 50 guys, uh, rather than just, you know, throwing the book at Mexico, but um, this is the soup we're swimming in, at least for this war. Well, it looks like we'll be getting a big chunk of Guyana, because we just swayed in to Dutch Guyana onto their side, doing a little yo-yo sway for Dutch Guyana, and we also traded the UK for the British Guyana, and so now we just need one last Infinity Stone, and we will have all the Guyanas. We also reverse swayed um, yeah, we'll just gain progress here. We also reverse suede in order to get Argentina, um, and so this is going to be pretty good. We are getting ticking positive relations. I think we're going to bankroll them uh, when we get the chance, uh, just so we can reduce autonomy. Uh, but just to be clear, like in terms of our market, we are doing pretty good uh, as far as the Americas go, making a whole bunch of progress here. Um, and I've really liked the, the saber rattling that we can do with national militia while simultaneously basically paying nothing for our military. Military. Um, you know, people are super willing to back down, and we're only paying for, like, a standing army of 20, effectively. So this has been pretty effective, and maybe it's even worth going National Militia, uh, like, actively in other runs, uh, because this is allowing us to do so, so much. And it's allowing us to leverage our pop in order to, you know, saber rattle, because when we have a lot of pop, we get a lot of conscripts, and with that lot of conscripts, people just kind of back down. Well, speaking of saber rattling, you know, we have this... Uh, 700 stack uh, that is a theoretical 700 stack but we could never hope to possibly fully utilize it but uh, we could really get transfer a lot of subjects or kind of whatever from the UK by doing this yo-yo sway which is going to leave us on the same side as the UK anyways um, and so the question is is okay do we want to transfer Cape Colony uh, we can't transfer the very biggest we can't transfer this um, the British uh, East India Company. But other than that, we can transfer anything we want. And so I guess the, the big ones are uh, Hudson Bay Company, um, you know, because we're going to get a big chunk of Columbia District anyways. Um, another one is going for New South Wales, which is going to be pretty nice. Uh, we could go for Cape Colony with the understanding that these other two could get bigger. Or we could even go for the little cheeky cutoff uh, and go for Rift Valley. Or even Kenya would be like, a reasonable one as well. Um, I, I really don't know what we're supposed to do. We could also just ask for a bankroll and wreck their economy so that we could build up. Um, I just... <sighs> the world's our oyster in this, in this one. I think we go for... Okay, Cape Colony just can't be it. And neither can this Rift Valley. Non well, Rift Valley is maybe good because it will cut them off quite, quite strongly um, from what they can normally do. And we won't be able to get in, but that's also not really too big a problem. The thing is, is I think we're gonna go for Cape Colony. We're gonna go for this. We're gonna go for the nice clean map here down here. 
and they will say yes, and we will be on their side uh, with our 800 stack uh, in terms of being able to mobilize. We do complete our destiny, and uh, California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico all become homelands that are, you know, roughly accepted by us. Not fully accepted, and so they will incorporate much, much, much faster. I wonder if, here, we're just going to incorporate all this stuff. I am curious if this is going to retroactively apply. It looks like it will retroactively apply. And so we are getting a much, much closer to full manifest destiny, and we do have this border dispute. Uh, we have to to discover the Oregon Trail, and so we are going to try and discover the Oregon Trail, but that's what this is all about. And of course, we did get uh, this for Freezy's good uh, DLCs. Ah, uh, steel frame buildings. Feels nice. We're going to put the Statue of Liberty at the front of the queue for that tasty, tasty migration attraction. And now we have a little bit of a choice. We are not spreading uh, in every category, and we want to kind of stay that way, so we don't want to go too far ahead of time in various, uh, you know, spheres. I think what we are maybe going to be... Well, so we're not spreading the chem bleaching. It's a little bit tempting to go for rubber mastication. We could go for dynamite uh, to help uncover more stuff. Uh, and on top of that, we do have quite a bit in the way of uh, the mines. Uh, we could even go ironclad. Uh, don't hate the ironclad. Ironclad seems reasonable. Um, kind of like civilizing mission too. I think civilizing mission into... Hmm. Civilizing mission just seems... So eventually we do want to go feminism so that we can go... Yeah, let's go... Let's go human rights here. Uh, with the idea that we're not going to complete human rights. We're just going to... I mean, we could go labor movement. This would help to make the one guy stronger, restricted. This, These are actually laws that we kind of want to pass anyways. But we actually really like our political situation. It's super dirty because we only have one political party. Industrials want to join. If they joined, it would be not very legitimate. But with as it stands, they just get to be hyper-legitimate. We get to have this hunter legitimacy. Um, even if we were running max taxes and have a whole bunch of people in the government, this seems like super great. And uh, the thing is, is... Uh, new parties become possible, if I'm not mistaken, if we research labor movement, which makes labor movement a little bit less attractive. Um, and I don't think that's the case with human rights. And I think that we could go for human rights, but we also maybe... Hmm, oh, we don't even have Panama this uh, in this instance. Uh, hmm, I'm actually not even sure what we research. I think we... We'll just go with dynamite. I think dynamite's never bad. Uh, and then we'll just keep an eye on what else is going around over here and maybe go for some of the stuff we mentioned. So we've also turned the taxes all the way back up. We started to import glass in addition to having it at the top of the queue here. And we've started to turn on the construction sectors, moving from about 250 to 400 pretty, pretty quick here. And we're still making money. I think we let kind of the, the markets resolve a little bit. We do have to keep an eye on this glass. The glass is a little bit expensive. The steel is a little bit expensive. I think we let it play in recovery mode a little bit, but we should be, um, you know, swapping onto all steel frame relatively quickly, which should get us up to about 500 construction, which is quite a bit up from the start of the episode. Looks like we can make an attempt to buy Alaska. Normally, you can kind of go for Alaska pretty easy, uh, but we're just going to make an offer. Uh, Three million over the course of one year. Uh, we'll make the offer, and they should accept because it's flavor. Flav, Flav. Now this is going to be 11 months. This is going to be a little bit of an expensive nut, but it's well worth it because gold, please. Gold will appear here. We, of course, will incorporate, and it'll be super nice, and we'll put this on auto-expand. I don't know if we have qualifications here. Uh, ooh, we have a ton of peasants. In fact, we have unemployed, so let's get these going right away. Let's put this at the top of the queue, and this, and also put this on auto-expand, which will be right nice. For us uh, and that will basically pay for itself pretty quickly here with just the gold and we just have one last little bit of business um, w in order to get you know kind of full American borders and that is uh, we must first do this expedition and then I think we also need to complete uh, that little bit of colonization oh no it doesn't look like we do uh, but we are do we need that for Frontier Wars? It looks like we're going to need to do a little bit of stuff. Uh, anyways, I'm going to wait for... Ugh. We're going to push on. How irksome. Ugh, that's a lot of peril. No! Not my gumdrop buttons. That's unfortunate. 
Well, we're gonna try, try again. Uh, map the American Western Frontier. And uh, not really caring who we're using. Uh, can't really sway into this anymore, but we didn't want to sway into that because France is paying us a bankroll and uh, we would rather they keep paying us the absolutely soul-suckingly, soul-suckingly crippling bankroll of 85K, you know, weekly. So this is a really important journal entry, the thought, the word, the ideal, because it unlocks the new Colossus uh, journal entry, which is going to require, which is going to require that we go uh, multiculturalism. So you see here, uh, we have to have freedom of conscience uh, and we need to ha have multiculturalism, at least freedom of conscience. Wait, what? One of these. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and then we need to enact multiculturalism and get the SOL up. So multiculturalism is going to be an important one. And at the end of this, we will get to 25% uh, free migration attraction, which is going to stack, of course, with the Dear Dear Statue of Liberty, which is giving us a migration attraction, which we just finished up. We are finishing up the last days here of, uh, you know, getting onto this. And we should see a lot of things here. We have low peril. We can wait for nightfall, I think. Uh, I'm not sure exactly these events. I'm not super used to doing it. I don't know which events are good, which events are bad. Um, you used to just ex banish your guy to the Shadow Realm when you did this, but this is going to be super, super nice for our migration attraction. You can see um, we are getting uh, flat amounts from unused arable land and from standard living, and then we're getting a uh, percentage from Great Power, Intelligentsia, and the Statue of Liberty in New York now, uh, which is going to be fantastic. We swayed over here for an obligation, which should be pretty nice. And we're just waiting to finish this up uh, in addition to, because I think that this is the last one we need in order to do Columbia District, and then we'll have a very nice looking America. This is what we're pushing for by the end of this episode here. Hey, 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 we do find an Oregon Trail uh, and we will get Oregon Trail mapped, which is all we need in order to finish this, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And we will get the Oregon Trail Treaty and we will become the deer owner of so all this dirt. And we have fully manifested the US's destiny. Got some nice clean borders, which feels pretty good. Um, also, you know, 500 construction and uh, a whole bunch of free stuff. You know, freezies, good dealsies, really starting to get a lot of South America here a little bit of stuff over here we're pretty low on the infamy count and as far as the goal of the run we are at 57 million so uh we're on our way to half a billion unfortunately these guys do not appear to be radicalizing uh do not see any turmoil here which is going to be a bit of a problem so i think we're going to have to s cause the turmoil ourselves uh, which is going to involve us actually building up a really big army or fully conscripting, which will be extraordinarily expensive uh, if we were to commit to the conscript. Uh, you know, that is to say, commit 700 conscripts here. Uh, probably would need to reorganize the army, this sort of thing. And so maybe we try and do this. Maybe we try and pillage our way through Qing um, in order to, you know, try and convince them to change... Uh, to a different religion. We can see there's quite a bit of Protestant pops down here, but just kind of only in uh, Guangdong, so um, I don't know if the Heavenly... I don't think the Heavenly Kingdom's gonna spawn. I don't know all the conditions by heart, but um, unfortunately the main idea of this run... Yikes. Yikes on the glass. Um, I, uh, unfortunately, I don't know if um, we're, it's quite in the cards, so... But we do have this and uh, overall the run feels pretty pretty solid here um, and so yeah if you enjoyed feel free to like comment subscribe do the YouTube algorithm thing and other than that have a good day